This is Dr. Fox. Let's talk about the larynx. In this video, we'll discuss the larynx and the major cartilaginous parts of the laryngoskeleton and relate any important features of those cartilages to the structure and functions of the larynx. So the larynx is colloquially known as the voice box. It sits inferior to the hyoid bone, which is there, to which it's connected by the thyrohyoid membrane. It's named such because that membrane runs between the thyroid cartilage, which is a major constituent of the larynx, and the hyoid bone. The larynx sits anterior to the laryngopharynx, which would be the portion of the pharynx, which is about there, and that is contiguous with the esophagus. And it sits proximal to the trachea, which is that conductive pathway to the conductive pathways of the lungs. And the larynx is con connected to the trachea via the cricotracheal ligament that runs between the cricoid cartilage of the larynx and the trachea. We tend to relate structures to their relative positions of various elements of the vertebral column. And for the larynx, we estimate that it sits approximately between C4 and C6 levels of the cervical spine. Let's take a look at some of the constituent cartilaginous parts of the larynx. So the larynx is largely comprised of hyaline cartilage elements that we refer to as the laryngoskeleton. Now the major portions of the laryngoskeleton are the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, epiglottic cartilage, and the arytenoid cartilages, which are paired, as we'll see. There are a few other minor paired cartilaginous elements, but they won't be the focus of this video. So let's take a look at these structures. So I'm outlining now the thyroid cartilage. That thyroid cartilage is a very prominent anterolateral cartilage of the larynx. Looking at this posterior view, we see that the thyroid cartilages are, are incomplete posteriorly. The cricoid cartilage, which I am circling now, see here, is the only portion of the laryngoskeleton which is complete 360 degrees around the airway. The epiglottic cartilage in profile here, in lateral view, we can see it just tipping out there is a little more obvious when viewed from the posterior as a stem and leaf-like appearance to it. And then the arytenoid cartilages sit atop the cricoid cartilage. They're more sort of cone or funnel shaped. And we're going to see those are going to be very important cartilages with respect to the functions of the larynx. So let's take a look at some of the features of these major cartilages. So the thyroid cartilage consists of two laterally placed laminae or sheets. And there's one lamina there and the other meets it along the midline there. There is a laryngeal prominence, which is located there. That's a palpable landmark. So if you take a, a finger or two and palpate the, uh, the midline or the, the median of your neck, you can palpate that laryngeal prominence. That laryngeal prominence tends to be even more prominent in individuals with higher levels of testosterone. There are two sets of horns. There is a superior horn, and that is going to come very near to the greater horn or cornua of the hyoid bone. And then there is an inferior horn. 
that inferior horn is going to form a joint with the cricoid cartilage, the cricothyroid joint, and that's going to allow for a pivoting motion of the thyroid cartilage, which we'll see in a little bit. That cricoid cartilage, as I've said, is the only element of the laryngoskeleton which is complete 360 degrees about the airway. Um, it's going to form a base upon which the arytenoid cartilages sit. And there is also the epiglottic cartilage which articulates with the thyroid cartilage. And that's going to um, help along with the arytenoid cartilage uh, form the laryngeal inlet. Laryngeal inlet. That's the space into and out of which air is going to flow between the larynx and the laryngopharynx. The arytenoid cartilages are some of my favorites. They're really, um, you know, undernoticed, but uh, high value, high ROI uh, cartilages. Um, they sit atop the cricoid cartilage, like so. Um, and they are controlling both the laryngeal inlet and what specific folds within the larynx called the vocal folds are doing. So we can see the arytenoid cartilages from the superior here. One is there and one is there. Most of, but not all, but most of the intrinsic laryngeal musculature are going to control what these arytenoid cartilages are doing. And they will have muscular processes, sort of posterior laterally here. Those muscular processes allow the intrinsic laryngeal muscles to move the arytenoid cartilages. And anteriorly, there are also vocal processes. Those vocal processes are going to allow the vocal ligament to connect between the arytenoid cartilage and the anterior portion of the thyroid cartilage. And so those vocal ligaments are invested by mucosa to form vocal folds, also known as your vocal cords. And when the arytenoid cartilages move, those vocal ligaments can abduct or abduct so as to open up, oops, so as to open up the airway, or they may adduct, adduct, so as to narrow the airway, and that's the position for phonation. So we won't get into the details of all of the intrinsic laryngeal muscles. We'll just show you a few exemplars here. Uh, and the first are going to be the posterior cricoarytenoid muscles. So posterior gives you an idea of where these are located, and crico a retinoid gives you an idea of the attachments. So the posterior cricoretinoid muscles attach to the posterior aspect of the cricoid cartilage, and they come up and they attach to the muscular processes of the arytenoid cartilages, and they're going to predominantly laterally pivot the arytenoid cartilages. So when they pull back like so, that causes the arytenoid cartilage to laterally pivot, and that is responsible for adduction of the vocal fold or a more open airway for ventilation. These posterior cricoarytenoid muscles are innervated by branches of the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, known as the recurrent laryngeal nerves. Another exemplar muscle is the cricothyroid muscle, the cricothyroid muscle is best viewed anteriorly and laterally, and the cricothyroid muscle acts upon that cricothyroid joint. And so when 
the muscle is activated, that's going to pull the thyroid cartilage anteriorly and inferiorly. So it tips it forward at that joint. When it tips it forward, that is going to put tension on those vocal folds, the vocal cords, and that's going to increase pitch. More tension equals elevated pitch. The cricothyroid muscles are innervated by another branch of the vagus nerve called the superior laryngeal nerve, specifically the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. The internal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve is going to be um, sensory from the mucosa superior to the vocal folds, but the external branch is going to be efferent or motor to this cricothyroid muscle. All of the other intrinsic laryngeal muscles are innervated by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So this is a fantastic exception to the innervation of the intrinsic laryngeal muscles. One clinical item of note here um, is that the larynx is a region where you may access the airway in an emergent situation by performing something known as a cricothyrotomy. A cricothyrotomy is the incision of the skin and the underlying median cricothyroid ligament, sometimes rather um, unempathetically referred to as a crike. Um, this procedure may be done in order to gain access to the airway in an emergent situation. And how that is performed is you would palpate the laryngeal prominence there, and you would go just below the laryngeal prominence. You can also palpate the cricoid cartilage. So if you put your finger along the midline of the neck, you can palpate first that laryngeal prominence next to the cricoid cartilage, and between them is going to be a soft spot. That soft spot is the median cricothyroid ligament, so you would incise the skin, and then you would incise the cricothyroid ligament there, and you may cannulate so as to maintain an airway. What's nice about this procedure is that there are very excellent palpable landmarks, and there are no major vascular obstacles that uh, you can perforate in performing it. This is not a long-term solution to managing an airway, but it will do in an emergency situation. So we've discussed the larynx and its constituent cartilages and their major features, and we've talked a little bit about how various intrinsic laryngeal muscles can affect that laryngeal skeleton. This is your summary slide. Thank you for your time.